And we are live. Welcome, mystery, thriller, and true crime fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am so incredibly honored to host tonight the incredible Lana Wood, here to tell us all about her brand new book, Out Today, Little Sister, My Investigation into the Mysterious Death of Natalie Wood. Live from California, Lana, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us about your book. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's so much to tell. Um, I got to a point in my life where people were gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, my sister was gone. My mother was gone. My dad was gone. My daughter was gone. And it worried me that Natalie would be forgotten. Mm. And it worried me that nobody seemed to have her back. Nobody was watching out for her name mm. or anything. Um, she was actually the brunt of jokes sometimes. Um, a lot of, of bad things were said, rude things were said about her by Robert Wagner, by her own daughters. Um, and it just, it really upset me. And um, when suddenly I got the opportunity to deal with the two detectives that came and knocked on my door and said, we're investigating your sister's death, that was it. I thought, this is what I really must do. I've got to set the record straight. I've got to not deal with anybody's fantasies and no suppositions, no tabloid rumors, nothing. I just wanted to show the exact facts in as much order as I could put them because this was a, a tough book to write. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to do away with a lot of the baloney and just say, these are the facts. Now, mm. if you all listen to the facts, it's quite clear what happened. I mean, it's very clear. There's mm. nothing else to consider. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you for writing this powerful book. Thank you for coming on the show to talk with us about it tonight on your pub day. We have a lot to get into because there's a lot in this book. You share a lot. You reveal a lot. You uh, debunk a lot of rumors and you reveal a lot of truths. And we are at a cultural mm -hmm. moment where uh, revealing truth, speaking truth, setting truth free is happening. And I'm so happy to see you be a part of that. And we're going to get into all of that. But first, I just want to welcome everyone who's watching. Welcome if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on my channels, Murder by the Book channels, wherever you're watching from, welcome. You are in the right place and we are thrilled to have you. So as you know, if you've been here before, you know the drill. If you're new, Welcome. Here's the drill. Every Monday and Tuesday today, in honor of Lana's pub day, I present you my featured handpicked authors and you get to ask them anything. So this is your chance to, uh, to ask an actual real life Bond girl, <laughs> a, child, a child actor was in a movie with John Wayne. You can ask her anything about this book, about her investigation, um, about the mysterious death of her sister, or the practice of writing this book. Let's get into it. I'm going to hop into the comments already. Gail Rosenfeld, welcome. She's saying this is such a terribly sad story. Gail, it is. it is. Thank you and welcome. Always a pleasure to have you. Katcha saying, Lana, my heart goes out to your sister, Natalie, and your family with love from Wendy. Sharon saying, hi from Minnesota. Sharon, top community member. Always delightful to have you here. Gail saying she likes to remember the beautiful, talented actress that she was. Absolutely. Leslie saying hello from Canada, giving us her signature Canadian hello. Hello. 
<laughs> George Beach saying good evening from Texas. George, top community member there. Great to have you with us. Thank you, everyone. So whatever questions you have for, for Lana, get them going here in the comments. And I'm going to kick us off with some questions of my own. So, Lana, you share a lot of never-before-revealed um, secrets, uh, which started trending on Friday after the AP article, which then went viral. It was, I, I mean, you're everywhere. You're in NBC, ABC, the morning shows, the AP. Oh it's everywhere. Um, revealing this secret um, this about uh, something that your sister shared with you. Um, about Kirk Douglas, who was a yes. three-time Oscar nominee, winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, and the Presidential Medal, Medal of Honor. Not such an honorable guy. Um, tell us about that moment in the car with your sister and how, and later when she told you the whole truth. Um, in the car, my mom and I had uh, dropped her off. All I was told was, you know, get in the car, we're taking Natalie to an interview. We parked on a side street and um, it was getting quite dark and the street lights had come on. And I was getting very bored because we were waiting a really long time. And I lay down in the back seat and um, then suddenly I heard the, uh, the door open and Natalie get in and my mom and her were like face to face. Something was going on. Things were being whispered, but there seemed to be um, a great deal of panic in what they were saying. Um, Natalie looked dreadful. Um, she was crying. Um, it was so bizarre, but I was very young. And so nothing was said to me. And I was sort of accustomed at that point in time of just going along. And if they wanted to tell me something, they would. And if they didn't want to, then it was okay with me, if you can understand that. Um, so for a long time, um, I hadn't even thought about it. But when she finally told me, it explained so much to me of the way she reacted, her problems that she had finding someone to love her and that she trusted. Um, it just explained so much. I mean, we were sitting at her, her bar and... Um, we were talking about a lot of personal things, but we don't discuss sexual things ever. Um, that was just not done in our family. And Natalie and I never, never did that either. But she said, she made me promise that I would not tell anyone. And I didn't for a very long time, but now so much has gone on and so much has happened. And I want everyone to understand who Natalie was. Um, and she told me that she went on an interview and met with Kirk Douglas. Mm -hmm. And um, she said that he hurt her. Mm -hmm. That's more or less all she would say is he hurt me. And obviously it was, you know, quite clear to me at that point in time what she meant, you know, and it, it really, really troubled me. But there again, I mm -hmm. didn't feel I was keeping a secret. I mm -hmm. didn't feel I could say anything. And if I, if I said anything, what difference would it make? Which is right. all women's fears. Um, you don't, you don't want to say something because you'll think you'll be ignored or someone will come up with an excuse, you know, oh, mm. she's only saying that because she's only, it, it's always, you know, swept under the rug. Um, mm. Even, even when he died, um, 
I don't have any anger towards him. I'll, I'll start by saying that. I really don't. And perhaps it's not terrifically rational, but I feel that a lot of very good people who do good things have a dark side. Some people give in to that dark side and others don't, but they are aware of it. It's a thought, it's an uh, action that you shove aside, um, that you ignore, but some don't. And I'm not saying that he was a terrible person. What he did was terrible. And um, when he died, as I was saying, people would come to me and say, could you please press? Could you please, you know, comment on this? And we've heard the rumors and on and on. And I never did. I would not go on camera. I would not say anything. But then in writing this book, I came to the decision that it, it was time. And I wouldn't hurt anyone else by saying this because that was never Natalie's intention and it certainly is not mine. Mm. It's interesting that some things have changed so much in 2021, yes. Yes. Um, having this cultural moment after the Me Too movement where we are starting finally to have these conversations, to speak truth to power more, to believe women's stories, to not protect men uh, and men's misdeeds. And yet some things haven't changed so much. Why don't we believe women? Why do we ask what they're wearing? Why were they, why were they there? Are you sure it happened? It's interesting to see what has changed and what has mm -hmm. not changed so much. Um, Lana, in your book, you share this moment, um, and Gail is asking about this. She's, you, you share the moment, um, both from your perspective as yourself of yourself in that moment as a very, as a young girl, and mm -hmm. then later as the mother of a young girl, as the mother of Evan, um, thinking mm. to yourself, would I ever send my 15 year old daughter or my daughter of any age into a hotel late at night? to meet with a much older man, something I could not help but wonder myself, even as I was trying not to blame the woman. Sure. Um, and Gail's asking that same moment, same question I think a lot of us have. Why do you think that your mom dropped Natalie off alone at that hotel that night to see Kirk Douglas? Was this typical in Hollywood then? Fill us in on what you think your mom- No, you know, I, I don't think it was typical. It was typical of my mother. Because if you know more about Natalie, when she first started acting, um, she was doing a film where it's raining heavily and she's crossing a little rickety bridge and the bridge collapses just as she gets to the other side. And it was a very dramatic moment. But when they went to time it, when they were filming, the, uh, the man that had set it all up... Um, did get the timing right and the bridge collapsed while she was on it and she hit her arms. She was able to grab on to something and claw her way up. Um, and everybody thought it was a wonderful scene and they just said, you know, cut and whatever. And Natalie went to my mother and said, my wrist hurts. It really hurts. And it was quite obvious it was broken. And at that point, my mom said to her, do not tell anyone, do not mention it, do not shed a tear, or you're going to lose your job. You will have no career. She did the same thing again, didn't she? Don't tell anyone, don't say anything, don't do anything, because you could, you know, do nothing but hurt yourself because he's a major star. Mm. Um, it was different back then. It was, it was different when I was working. It was more accepted, I think, by a lot of women that if, you know, a, a member of your, the cast or the director, the producer, whatever, if somebody, you know, grabbed you, gave you a kiss, 
you thought nothing of it. Oh, that's what they do. If somebody smacks you on the bottom, oh, well, that's what they do. Um, you know, the sexual jokes, whatever. It wasn't, women so accepted that position that nobody even bothered to say anything. You accepted it. So I'm delighted that things have changed. I mm. really am. It's a step forward. So not just a, so both a personality trait of your mom, but also a reflection of the times and yes. attitude toward women, what was acceptable behavior, the casting couch era, the so-called casting couch era, the, and again, right. what was expected of women in the workplace. Um, you also share that your mother was driven to help Natalie succeed. She had this vision Natalie had to succeed. She had to make that happen for her. And you share um, where that, that comes from. Actually, a prophet, prophecy from a psychic that was only half of the prophecy. Yeah. Walk us through that moment, Lana. Um, it was difficult for me to even put it together. I really didn't. Mm. I just know that my mom would tell Natalie's fortune and mine together she would do it with cards playing cards and she would bring up things and natalie was wrapped in attention she listened to every word my mom said and um would then leave the room and then my mom would go on with me and when she would finish my fortune i'd go yeah okay thank you very much Goodbye. And she'd say, oh, you can't thank me because then none of this will come true. And I said, OK, I'll take my chances. And um, as I've said, Natalie took it to heart. But I was being raised differently and I was a different person, obviously. Um, and I just thought it was all baloney. Um, I used to live in the water. I'm a certified scuba diver. Um, I, I love under under the water i love it um but natalie was really traumatized and um i don't know how it became such a part of her my mom had probably been telling her since she was young because it was a story she loved to tell loved it because it was magical and mystical and you know this portend of tragedy and my mom was uh, very much a drama queen. <laughs> there, there again, it isn't that she was a bad person. It's just that she had this side of her that was driven and manipulative. And she thought she was doing it all for Natalie, for mm. Natalie's happiness. She was going to make sure that she had this wonderful career and mm -hmm. that she would be everything the gypsy said, that she would be famous and known internationally. And, you know, that was just, that was my mom. And for those who don't know about the prophecy, about this fame, this dual part fame and tragedy, tragedy um, fortune telling, walk us through that moment, because that was really quite fascinating. Um. Yeah, devastating. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. There, it's, there's so much to think about and to clarify in your own mind that uh, a lot of times I simply can't. In writing this book, I can't tell you how many times I stopped because it hurt too much. And I would have to leave everything and leave it alone and mm. go off and try to do something else or cry it out. Yeah. You know, do something. And um, I would go back in another couple of days or whatever, but I, I, I couldn't continue. There wasn't an even flow. Um, mm. It was really hard. It must have been very hard. And you said you needed some time to, you needed this much time to process it. I can't imagine being able to dredge it up. I mean, I can't imagine trying to get through it and then trying to dredge it all up and always wondering and never having closure. How long did it take you to write, to, 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 to go through that emotional process of bringing it back up 
and and starting to tell it finally after all these years after 40 years well it was um it was a year yeah it was i started working on this last year uh but you'd been collecting November. you'd been collecting information like when the medical oh, examiner that retired happened a long time ago yeah yeah that, and so that been, actually started yeah when well a lot of things when Dennis DeVern, who was the captain on the boat, when he, he started calling me. Um, and he would call you and be broken and, and racked with guilt, but terrible. also not willing to, feeling conflicted himself, feeling scared because Robert Wagner was such a powerful person. Um, yes. Him being and one of the people on the boat. And, you know, all involving. I mean, Dennis is just a regular guy mm. and he was he was in awe of the fact that um he was working for natalie and rj it um it's i understand it completely because people always question dennis's motives it, this is something horrible that he was a part of yeah that he feels he could have done something and he didn't he was you know enveloped by rj and what rj wanted and i understand it he wasn't going to gain anything by telling me everything that he did it wasn't until the petition got going and the case was reopened that suddenly there was a knock on my door and it was two detectives from homicide yeah and uh they looked at photos and they talked to me forever and they said, may we come back? And I said, yes, please <laughs> come back. Anything. They were very open and honest with me. They did visit me several times, if not more. Mm -hmm. um, we spoke on the phone. We sent texts. Mm. Um, a lot of things. And I mean, it just began to build and build yeah. and build. Um and I feel that I didn't really defend Natalie as I mm. should have. I am doing that now. Mm -hmm. It was time for me to step up. And despite any of the reactions, I had to tell what Natalie went through and what Natalie thought and who she was. And then outline step by step what happened that night and what was going on before that night. Mm. The questioning, the unhappiness, Natalie's, you know, leaving a party, which she was prone to do, but she didn't do often. Mm -hmm. um, but that last night that uh, I spent at her house with the, the party goers mm -hmm. celebrating Thanksgiving, um, she got up and said, everyone, please stay, have a lovely time. I'm going to bed. She went up the stairs and that was it. That was her good night. Mm -hmm. um, there was something going on. She never sat and, and really spoke to anyone. She would flit from person to person, sit over here a while, sit over here, do. It. She was in constant motion. Mm -hmm. um, something was off. Something was off. Mm. So, and then that odd thing that she said to me before that, uh, when we were discussing what about Thanksgiving dinner, what about, you know, what, did, what am I going to wear? What is she going to wear? <laughs> and she suddenly said to me, um, okay, that's good. Um, if I don't divorce RJ first. And I, I went, <laughs> and oh, then I wondered right. about it. I'm like, right. okay. You know, the two of us joke around a lot and we are silly and we say whatever comes into our heads. But perhaps she really meant that. But she yes. said it in an offhand manner. Mm. And I didn't really pay attention to it. But that became quite obvious even the night before she died. Mm. That she was very unhappy that she wanted to leave. She didn't want to stay on the boat. So um, just all of that, it was just, you know, very upsetting.
I'm sure. I'm sure. And then going back through and second guessing everything. Well, when, well that's what I didn't want to do. You know, I, I was, um, yeah, I was given the first police report. Yeah. Not by the current homicide detectives, but by someone else. And, um, I, I did get a lot from the current homicide detectives and Dennis. And it, it's so easy if you just listen to those three areas, if you put that in order, it's obvious that he is responsible for her death. I mean, it's like Lieutenant Karina said on the press conference that he held about uh, RJ being named person of interest. He said, one of the, the reporters asked him something and uh, he said, all we know is there were two people arguing on the back of the boat and then there was one. Exactly. And when I read it at that. Yep. And when I read that part of your book, I, I mean, I got goosebumps, all the hairs on the back of my neck stood up because it's such a, it's, it comes down to being that simple. Yes. Yes. It does. Let's get over to some questions. Wendy saying hello from Toronto, Ontario. Wendy, welcome to the conversation. Melissa saying, hi, Sarah and Lana. How lovely that you and your sister have similar features. Um, absolutely. They look so much alike, right, Melissa? Sharon saying, this is so tragic. She is very interested to hear about your book. Um, Gail saying, oh, one of her favorite movies is Miracle on 34th Street. Yes. Oh, mine too. Me too. Um, yeah. Gail asking what, you know, what do you think happened on the boat? Just as we were talking about, um, thank you for that question, Gail. Great question. Um, oh my goodness. So many, so many great questions. Um, this one, welcome to the conversation, Elisa Sharkey. So great to have you here. Your editor, um, Lana, she's asking, what do you think might happen with the case now that the book has come out? You know what? It isn't a matter of what I think may happen because what I think gets a lot of people in a lot of trouble. Um, what I hope is that his truth will come out, that he will somehow have the courage, find the courage to tell the truth and stop all of this. Um, that's, that's all I can hope for really realistically. That's all I can hope for. The book, however, is also so people don't forget Natalie. Mm. Who Natalie really was what Natalie really went through. Not, you know, these woven bizarre stories, you mm. know, not from RJ saying, you know, she may have gone off in the dinghy to a party. She's, She's like that. Yeah. In her flat and light gown and her woolly socks. I thought she'd given up dressing like that for parties, but evidently <laughs> I was incorrect. <laughs> right. Right. So for those who don't know, Natalie was found wearing her flannel nightgown and her fuzzy socks. Her husband claimed that she had put herself from their yacht, the Splendor, into lowered herself down on a cold November night had lowered herself into a dinghy and rowed herself away despite her paralyzing fear of drowning of water, um, of dark water, especially, um, and rode herself to a party in her flannel nightgowns. Uh, there again, when the dinghy was found, the oars were in the locked position. Mm -hmm. The engine had not been turned on and everything was untouched completely. So for him to even say something like that is ridiculous. Makes no sense because that's not part of the facts. Right. Exactly. That's it defies logic. Um, it does. Exactly. And so much of it does come to that. Gail would like to know, have you spoken to Kirk's family in the wake of these revelations? No, I have not. Yes. And so, Gail, there's a lot of articles about there that is fascinating. I've been reading all of them. Um, the Michael Douglas has issued a statement saying simply may they both rest in peace. So not commenting either way. A good yeah. Idiot? Yeah. 
Um, it is. George saying he's loving these questions, Gail. Thank you. Gail always has great questions. Um, she was wondering how old Lana was when she met with Kirk. She was 15. You shared in the book. She was as as well as I can recall yeah. at the age of nine or ten myself. Um, yes, she was she was 15, 16. Um, so she was very young. And Gail wondering, why do you think this case has not been solved? And I wanted to say, Gail, there is, there is, Lana shares this in the book, and it is fascinating how the police at the time deferred to Roberts, you know, saying, oh, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Oh, okay, Mr. Wagner, let, you know, right. we'll end the murder investigation quiz at this yeah. time. <laughs> like, um, do you think that that would, I mean, do you think that would still happen today, Lana? Do you think it was a project of the no. time? You, yeah that would not happen today if this had taken place 10 years ago there would be a completely different outcome completely so um, you, if you think in today's world if this happened now they would hold him accountable despite the fact that he yes. was a big famous powerful actor himself yes yeah okay I excellent i like I like um, I like that. Leslie saying it is going to take a long time for the shift to occur and for women to be able to speak freely. It's coming, but it will take time to be heard. Yes. Well done for you for stepping up to the plate okay. for her. Leslie, thank you. thank you for that comment. George saying that let's never overlook the obvious. Absolutely, George. Great point. Um, yes. And we had some. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Lana. No, no, no. Tell me. Um, we had some questions uh, submitted in advance. So Anna Mariha Reback from the Reese Witherspoon Book Club submitted a question, submitted a comment, and she said, um, she said that she, that that this has always been one of her her that Natalie has always been one of her her mom's favorites, um, especially oh. Splendor Splendor in the Grass. She will be yes. getting the ebook when it um, because she is um, and she has said she said that that. Uh, she submitted this question in advance because she said from her tiny Croatia, she will be asleep as this is interviewing, but she will be watching it tomorrow. And she said to please tell you that your sister's legacy lives on over all over the world, even in her tiny Croatia. And at least one fan has pa is passing on her love to you tonight, um, saying That's that wonderful. may Natalie rest in peace. Um, that and sending you her love and admiration from this next generation. What a lovely comment all the way from Croatia. And Lana, you're saying that you've actually received a lot of um, support from all over the world, including North all Korea. Yes. <laughs> that's yes. that's really, really been lovely. Um, have you any favorite any favorite comments that you've received or words that have helped you to keep going in this difficult moment? Actually, there are quite a lot. I've I've been that silly person that takes um, snapshots. Of the ones that Yay. I like the best, and I keep them um, because it does mean a lot to me. It means yeah. a lot to me that Natalie is remembered. Mm. I don't want that to ever stop. She wasn't just an actress, she was a wonderful actress, but that isn't all she was. And um, I'm really appreciative of everyone's feelings and that they share them with me, or they have shared them with me. And it's so great to know that you're listening, you're watching, and this is meaningful yes. to you. Um, Diane Dennis also submitted a comment and event. She said, I saw you on the show on one of the, uh, I saw you today on one of the morning shows. And she said, I just wanted you to know, to commend you for your courage. You are saying what many of us have thought for years. The man is an actor after all. He can yeah. lie very well. Diane, sure. thank you for submitting that question. Um, and Lana, again, another uh, commendation on your courage. Um, Tanya Johns, Johns from Thrillaholics saying she would absolutely, she can't wait to read your book. Um, Junior saying, how do you feel when Robert Wagner moves on from Natalie Wood one, uh, once he's dated Jill St. John? Um, were you, how did you feel when he moved on? Um, I was very surprised because when I was concerned that his birthday was rolling around and he had just lost Natalie, yeah. um, going to his house during a party for him, um, that 
I was so uncomfortable there and my boyfriend and I ended up leaving rather soon. But I was told later that it was because Jill was there and he didn't want me to know this. So how did I feel about it? I, you know what? To feel anything would be making me judgmental. And that's what I try not to be. Because um, you share I in the book, you were hurt to not be invited. Yes. Because in the wake of the loss of your sister, your only sister, you were so hungry for family to connect with our yes. day, to connect with their two daughters, your nieces. You wanted to to reach out to these to to the husband and daughter she left behind to share the grief, the burden of grief. But yes. RJ didn't want you there. He he no. wasn't open to being to connecting with you, talking with you. He didn't okay. invite you to this party. Someone accidentally told you, then you and your boyfriend at the time show up. You were made to feel very uncomfortable. And all you wanted yeah. to do was to share the load of the of this loss, of this painful yes. loss. Yes. Um, he wasn't interested in that. No. Mm. No. Did that seem and, yeah, hurt, to you at the time, Lana? Were you like, why doesn't he want to grieve with me? Or were you just like, that's RJ? I'm sorry to say that he was never very important to me. Good, uh, okay. The place that he held was the fact that he was with my sister. That's where he was for me. Um, so I never really expected much from him. And um, I made my displeasure known when she went to remarry him. Um, and I probably was not terrifically attentive or anything to RJ. And it now doesn't surprise me that he simply doesn't care. But simply not caring is different than other reactions, which mm. is what he did. I mean, there's a big difference in that. Exactly. Leecha saying, good for you, Lana, for doing this. Leecha, thank you for joining the conversation. Always a pleasure to have you. Um, she is saying that she loves watching Natalie in the movies, as we yes. all do. Um, Gail would like to know who was Natalie's favorite co-star and was it James Dean? I mean, she had a lot of famous co-stars. We got Warren Beatty. We got James Dean. We got a lot of handsome leading men. Did she have yep. a favorite? Did she share? Um, she was mad about James Dean. She had a, uh, a bust of him that she carried to every single house she moved into. And it was always in a special place in the armoire. Um, her favorite was probably Laurence Olivier. She certainly did respect him and was so delighted to be working with him. It was um, meant a lot to her. Did she have a least favorite, male or female? Um, you know what? She never really said. She had issues with a couple here and there, but really not much. Um, Natalie was very professional on set, excuse me. And uh, she didn't like clowning around. She didn't uh, appreciate anyone else doing it. She mm. was there to work and that's what she expected from everybody else. Um, mm. After the filming of that day, then, you know, she could go and do and be whatever. Mm -hmm. But while she was working, she was nothing but professional. Um, the issues that she had with a couple of people were really just professional issues. Okay. Excellent. She never really hated anybody. Gail wondering, did she have a favorite movie role? I mean, so many iconic roles. Well, did she have a favorite from her perspective? Great question, Gail. She really liked Alva. She really liked playing Alva. Licho saying, congratulations on your new release. She is looking forward to reading the book. I want to remind y'all, the book is out today. It is fresh off the presses. It is hot off the presses. And you can buy it 
from our favorite woman-owned bookstore, Murder by the Book. You can shop a local. You can buy this beautiful book and you can read all of the juicy revelations that Lana is finally bringing into the light, bringing out to um, to share. And one of the things that I love are the water um, interstitials. Yes. This is really cool and it's beautifully done. You also share a lot of family pictures in here, which mm -hmm. I can't stop going to because I love I love, I love all these pictures of, 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 of Natalie and you as little girls, of Natalie and her family. But it's very interesting. And I think these are so beautiful to have the, the movement of the water at the woven throughout. Leach is saying I the love cover it too. is just beautiful. The two sisters there, the two wood sisters there. I'm trying to not get the light off of it. Very beautiful cover. Um, Karen saying, I am excited about this book and loving this interview. Thank you both for a great discussion. Karen, thank you so much. So great to have you here as always. Mystery and Thriller Maven there. Wonderful to have you. Um, Junior wondering, how do you feel about ooh, the new West Side Story remake? Have you seen it? I'm no, I haven't, but I will be, I will be there. I, I definitely want to see it. I was very impressed with the uh, the girl they found to play Maria. And I think Natalie would be flattered and very supportive of her and, and everyone. Um, she would be nothing but happy. So I can't wait to see it. It'll be hard. but It will be. Yeah, because she'll it. always yeah. be your Maria. And yeah singing all those iconic songs that I grew up listening to and singing. I remember my Me mother too. singing them around the house. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, let me just make sure I'm, I'm not missing any questions. Gail said, thank you, Lana, for sh shining some light on this tragic part of Hollywood. His sisters, we could think the two of you are just so beautiful. They absolutely are beautiful, beautiful sisters. Um, Junior wondering, will there ever be another Natalie biopic or documentary? I think we can hear your. I think we can hear your little dog chomping on his. <laughs> so having uh, a little. Um, Junior wondering if there'll right. be another Natalie biopic or documentary, Lana. Um, that would be wonderful. I don't. I don't know. You shared that um, in the HBO documentary, you felt that they had sort of portrayed you as the crazy aunt, um, the obsessive crazy aunt, um, and that this was a chance for you to, to set the story straight. Have you heard from your nieces about what they think about this? No? Okay. Um Oh, Gail, Gail, are you and I psychic? Are we having some sort of connection? She's wondering if you've been able to reestablish contact with her daughters, Natasha, Natasha and Courtney. No, not yet. That's okay. Um, no, Alicia, they, um, yeah, saying, how, how old were... Oh, sorry, what we're was that, Lana? I'm having a little uh, issue with sound. Yeah, I hear that. It's cracking cracking up i think crazy yeah okay um lisa wondering how old was natalie when she started as an actress you are both childhood actors how old were both of you when you started how old was i yeah and 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 long i and, was um eight you were eight and, and how old was natalie when she started with john wayne and and, and played natalie as a child one, I think we're breaking up a little tiny bit. One more time, Lana, tell us how old were each of you when you started? You can't hear me? Okay. Um, can can you adjust it? Let's see if we can try to fix it. That's okay. Hang with us, everybody. Um, that's okay. This is interviews in the time of Corona. <laughs> uh, if anyone has any, we have just a few minutes left. If anyone has any questions left for Lana... Get them going in the comments. We have just a few minutes left. And again, I want to remind you all that the book is out today and you can grab your copy. Lana, are you with us still? I, I am with you, you, but... Oh, perfect. Okay, we can hear you. That's uh, great. Actually, yes, I can hear you better now, too. I seriously okay, can hear a word you were saying. Okay, so we had a question from the audience. How old were you and Natalie when you started as childhood actors? 
Um, I was an actress with the John Wayne film, with The Searchers, yes. where I played Natalie as a child. So that was actually acting. If um, Natalie had put me in the background in one of her films, it wasn't really acting. It was called, <laughs> here, put on in the background. She's bored. Like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, eight, eight, nine. Natalie was four. Wow. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's amazing. Yeah. Very it young uh, to be doing that. Okay. Any last questions? We're just about to wrap up. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome. Uh, I'm just seeing everybody here logging on. Lana, I want to thank you so much for coming on tonight. And we're losing you a little bit again. I think it was actually better when you turned off your video, strangely. Um, I want to thank you so much thank for coming you. on tonight. It's a lot to me. And it's been such a pleasure to host you. It's been thank such a pleasure to have you. Everybody, grab your copy of this book. There are so many fascinating details, revelations, secrets revealed. You're going to want to read it. For the old, it is a perfect gift. And we have signed copies. That's the coolest thing. Murder by the Book has signed copies. So it is the perfect gift for the old Hollywood fan or the true crime lover in your life. Lana Wood, thank you for joining us. Y'all order this book and you will get a signed copy from Lana Wood herself. I'm going to say your So you have me as a new, new fan and reader. Oh my God, you're so, you're too kind. Lana, thank you so much. Everybody, I will see you Monday for Mystery Monday because you know Mondays can be murder. Thank you all. Thank you. The wonderful comments are coming in. Um, such a pleasure to host you. Lana Wood, thank you for the bottom of my heart for your courage and for revealing this these truths. We stand with you. Have a great night, everybody.